Check it on the other laptop. I'm checking it and it's not on yet. There we are. It's working now? So we're live? We're live. All right, let me know when you want me to start the recording. For posterity's sake. <laughs> Tell us mine, Sandy. It's working. All right. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, here we are again on a Friday afternoon at 1230. And um, I'm pleased to say that this time when I'm meeting with you, I am now officially the superintendent, which uh, it was kind of a pinch me moment. Like, oh, my goodness gracious, um, I landed in the seat. Um, and I can't thank you enough for your support and kind words and uh, just generally the, the, the very kind outpouring that I received from, from, from the district as a whole. And I really look forward to, to serving with you and, and working to make us one of the top school districts in the state. I believe we have the right crowd to do that. And um, as we work through this pandemic and the current situation we're in, uh, Please know that I still have a, uh, an eye on where, where we'll be down the road while we're working through where we're currently at, which obviously is quite challenging. And to that, you've done absolutely, again, amazing work. Uh, I can't say enough um, good things about uh, you to our board and to our community members about the effort that, that you continue to put in. Speaking of our board, we had a, a board of commissioners and board of education joint meeting yesterday. and. We had a very uh, productive meeting. Um, we, as you know, we have an overcrowding situation in the north. It's it's pretty imminent um, with our elementary schools, Mayock Middle School, in addition to Mayock Elementary in Charborough. Um, if you've driven north, driven any of the back roads, you can see the amount of builds that are going in, the amount of homes that are going up. And so our school system is continuing to grow. And um, our temporary plan for right now is that we're going to put an addition on, addition on Mayock Middle School. Um, that's a fairly simple one. And we're also going to put an addition on to Mayock Elementary School uh, with an eye moving forward uh, in 2022 to moving forward with the bond issue and a, and a much larger comprehensive plan uh, moving forward. We are one of the fastest, fastest growing counties in the state. And so this is our first step to addressing some of those issues. But that's, that was great news, and I wanted to update you with that. Um, I know the surveys that went out caused, well, what is the, I'll sum up surveys like this. Surveys are used to collect data for planning purposes, and that's all they are. They're, nothing you said is etched in stone. Um, we're using that to inform. I had been given a charge by the board last Thursday night to the, the sub subject to come up to return prior to the end of the nine weeks. And this was an attempt to try to gather data to determine uh, our next steps. And so to that end, um, there will be a presentation for our October meeting to the board with recommendations moving forward um, with an idea of targeting uh, the second nine weeks. Um, I do appreciate the amount of people that have answered the survey already. And that'll close on Tuesday. It's, we have had quite a high number return on it already. Um, and, but if you haven't filled it out, please take the time to do so. So that's kind of just the, you know, kind of you get the administrative overview. Uh, this is supposed to be professional learning, but I think all of that stuff matters. Um, and and that, that is, those are things you certainly want to hear. What you do know is today is the, the 19th anniversary of 9-11, and um, I don't know if there's anybody who was alive with the memory at that time. So there are teachers on our staff now who probably don't remember it um, because you were too young to remember. But um, for anyone who has, we all remember where we were um, at, at that moment. I distinctly remember I was teaching world history, and um, I had stepped into, I had an off, I had my planning period, and I saw people gather around the TV in the cafeteria, and when the second plane struck the the, the uh, other tower, I remember looking at people around me saying, did that just happen? Because up until that point, we really weren't sure. 
um, what, what was occurring. But it was, um, it, it was certainly a moment that changed everything for us. And, and it's kind of normalized some things in a, in a weird way. I mean, I, I can distinctly remember getting to the airport. Um, I would rush to the airport. Uh, bad reference here, like O.J. Simpson, but hey, I can still remember him running <laughs> with his Hertz renter car. I And you could jump on a plane. I mean, now flying has turned into, is it worth going to the airport for four hours so that I can cut my time, or do I drive six? Because it's going to take four. And that's an inconvenience, but it all stemmed from the 9-11 events. Um, just, and, and it's just our general more cautiousness, the, the wanding uh, when you go into a stadium. I'm, I'm saying some of those obvious things, but they've just become part of our lives. And whether or not we want to recognize it or not, um, you know, those are some of those personal liberties that we had just taken for granted. And uh, we, we had to rethink. So at this time, I would, um, I'd like us to pause for a moment and mourn the loss of the innocent lives from that horrific day in history. We also honor the efforts of so many people who made the ultimate sacrifice in responding to help. So let's pause here for a moment. Thank you. A hero is a person who in the face of danger combats adversity through feats of ingenuity, courage, or strength. While we honor those heroes from 19 years ago today, I, I also find it important to recognize all of you for your heroic efforts in getting our school year off to the best possible start. Um, I, and I mean that, like it, I, the efforts here in Currituck County to provide a structured education for our students is second to none. Um, I, I tune in around the state, we pay attention to what's going on. Um, and while it's been painful, the effort has been nothing short of, of, of miraculous. And our, our parents do appreciate uh, what, what is going on. I know our kids do. I mean, we all thrive with some structure. It, it's fun to go on vacation, but you know, after about, if you've ever taken a two week vacation on day 10, you're ready to go. And, and it, it, we, we want that structure here. Um, I know that many are still spending countless hours planning, grading, recording, and posting lessons for our students to access remotely, and your sacrifices do not go unnoticed. So I just wanted to say a, a huge thank you from, from myself and from our central services team and, and what you are doing on a daily basis to make things good. I pride that, that, that security for our students and that sense of structure that we all need to thrive in. To that end, I wanted to turn this over. We're going to have, uh, we have Ms. Virginia Arrington with us. She's our Director of Student Services, and she's going to answer a few questions pertaining to COVID-19. Now, this came about because we've had a few cases um, within our school system, and we want to just add some clarification. Virginia is so excited to be with us this moment. <laughs> presented the board yesterday and did a, uh, did a fabulous job. And so to that end, welcome, Ms. Arrington. Thank you. Happy to be here. All right. Ms. Brown, do you have any questions for her? You're muted. <laughs> it was you, me this time, not you. Dad, you want it? I'm trying to read your lips. <laughs> All right, Ms. Arrington, welcome. Uh, our first question for you today is, can you share with us current data for Curry Tick County from Albemarle Regional Health Services. Um, yes, I can. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that I meet with Albemarle Regional Health Services along with several surrounding counties twice a month, and then um, they have been a valuable resource if I have to contact them in between those times. They report data to us every two or every Friday. Um, the latest data that I do have is from last Friday, and. At that time, they reported 116 confirmed cases in Currituck with 23 active cases and 93 recovered. Data specific to Currituck County Schools includes two staff members tested positive right before school started, and an additional two staff members have tested positive since school started, and that resulted in six members being quarantined and one staff member that is teleworking for a short period of time. Currituck County also has 15 teachers that are currently teleworking because they are high risk medically and have doctor's notes. There is, um, so just to clear up some information in regards to the reporting, 
there are new mandates that require states to report to each other. So if your doctor is in Virginia or if you live in Virginia um, and go and get tested through them, then the Virginia Health Department is not talking to any health department in North Carolina. Also, not reflected in these numbers, if a staff member lives in another county and tests positive, the positive case is reported in the county in which they live and not the county in which they work. Uh, you can be tested through your doctor or through the health department. Currituck um, does COVID tests on Wednesdays from 8.30 to 10. Camden on Thursdays from 8.30 to 10.30, and they may go longer if, if they um, need to. And Pasquotan County go, uh, tests on Thursdays from 8.30 to 9.30. All of these health departments require appointments. I'm just going to leave myself unmuted so I can stop doing that. Um, question two for you would be, walk us through the process of a staff member who presents with symptoms of COVID, perhaps either at check-in or maybe throughout the day, they start feeling ill at the school level. What would that look like? Okay, so first of all, we would like to remind folks that if you do not feel well or if you have any symptoms, please do not report to work and notify your administrator or supervisor. Um, we do conduct, conduct symptom checks and temperature screenings at all facilities daily. And at that time, if there's any um, flags, that person would be sent home. Or if a, if a staff member starts feeling bad throughout the day, then they are sent home um, and all of that is documented. A staff member must be out for 10 days or get an alternate diagnosis from a physician before returning to work. All right, our next question is, what happens if a staff member doesn't feel well and gets tested and their test actually does report back as positive? Okay, so first and foremost, notify your administrator or supervisor and that administrator or supervisor would notify me and the health department. After that, we are required, the health department will talk with the person that tests positive to find out any folks that they were in close contact with. Um, also, they are asking the school to give any close contacts that we may know about as well. If you are a close contact in some, as in someone that has been considered exposed, you will be notified individually by the health department. And exposure is defined as within six feet for more than 15 minutes without a mask. Um, it is also important to note that if you are exposed to a positive case patient, you will be notified. Um, personally so that you know your situation. Kern County Schools is following all the mandates with regard to confidentiality. So if you are not notified and you have questions about your particular circumstance, it's important that you contact your ch school's nurse, your school's administrator, or me. Aha, uh -huh, it's your turn now. <laughs> <laughs> Not to throw you off, Virginia, but can you can you go into just a little bit more why you touched on that particular question and went to that level of detail? Did we have some problems perhaps with that this week? Well, we did, and I know people. COVID makes people very nervous and um, and anxious, and so people talk talk about that and um, in their nervousness, and they wonder if um, they are gonna be contacted or what does that mean for them personally? And with um, HIPAA rights, we cannot talk about other people's medical information. So we're only gonna talk about it if it refers to particular people with those particular people. 
He's muted twice now. So we're even. We're back to even. <laughs> All right. Ms. Harrington, our final question for you this afternoon are, what types of leave will staff need to take if they are asked to quarantine or have to quarantine because of another situation? Okay. So first of all, um, finance has provided for each bookkeeper a flow chart that will answer specific questions as far as what kind of leave and what um, and what steps that you have to take. So that information is in the schools. And so if you don't remember from today, you can ask your school's bookkeeper. Um, if you can telework, you don't have to take leave. So if we've asked you to quarantine or the health department has notified you to quarantine and you're not sick and you are able to telework from home, then you can telework and you do not have to take leave. Um, if you are unable to telework, then you will fill out a leave of absence form and FMLA forms with a doctor's note. In, in cases where you cannot telework and you have to take sick leave, you can get up to two weeks of leave with 100% pay. And then again, specific questions I would direct to your bookkeeper. But I think it's important to note that if you are sick and cannot work, you would take that emergency leave and that does not come out of your regular sick leave. All right, terrific. So I think again, part of us having Miss Arrington on for today was to make sure that we shared a little bit about um, what our current data looks like and being transparent about that, but also sharing the importance of understanding FERPA and HIPAA and the need for us to be careful that even though during all this anxiousness and trying to figure out, oh my goodness, was I exposed? Was there a chance that I could have been in contact with somebody? Um, just follow the proper chains of command and making sure that we're directing those questions to those persons who can point us in the right direction and help alleviate some of those uh, feelings of anxiousness or uncertainty as much as possible. So we appreciate you being on here. Um, we hope that we'll continue to update uh, our staff if we have any further information to share about positive cases or the impacts that they are of or any changes to policy or procedure, we will continue to keep you updated. So we appreciate Ms. Arrington joining us today to share some of that information. Thank you, Virginia. Hi, uh, again, so we're gonna do these check-ins. We're, we're trying to be mindful of your time, the efforts you're putting in during the week. Um, we know that uh, you know, starting at 1.30 in about 45 minutes, uh, we have a lot, we have a 50 minute PD session followed by, looks like most people are gonna be doing uh, trainings around NISAs today. And there are some changes in there, but we're always gonna be as mindful as we can. We have some policy that we need to go over with you and so on, but again, um, taking care of your mental health as well. Um, this four day week felt like every bit of six. So um, I'm sure it did to you as well. Yeah, and can't get off here that quick shout out to our tech department. You see Sandy popping up down there on the bottom doing the uh, home improvement look. Um, <laughs> above the, the fence. Um, but, you know, the work they've done, hey, we were online on a Tuesday morning after a three day weekend. And those of you that have worked here and any place else, that is usually just a recipe for disaster. So the tech department continues to do a yeoman's work, making adjustments, making the changes. And we are here to give you our best. And again, I, you might have caught that. We said central services, not central office. So that's how we're going to be viewing ourselves. And so thank you so much for the effort you made. I hope you have a great, wonderful uh, rest of the afternoon and get and refresh this weekend. Bye-bye.